Okay, first update. I found out more information about the M13 tarot deck. Do y'all remember the M13 tarot deck that I showed you in the last slide? Let me grab it because I have it right over here because I was doing some shadow work with it because it's fabulous for that. Okay, so I have my cards out. Okay. Now, I have a bunch of cards out because I was reading from them. So this is not the whole deck. But um, just to recap, I am in the middle of a beautiful budding relationship and partnership with a super cool shop in Russia, in Moscow, called Modern Magic. Shout out to Christina, the owner, who reached out to me and was like, we have this idea um, about connecting with witchy shops um, overseas, we want to show people that there's, you know, witches all over the world. Um, and like, we think you're cool. You're the Bronx witch. Like you're like the New York shop that we know, like we want to connect with that. Yes. Okay. I thought it was movie stuff, but guess what? It was not movie stuff. I was wrong. Okay. So first of all, M13 does not stand for movie <laughs> 13. It stands for Marie or Maria 13, who is the designer of the deck, who is Russian native, but has moved to Portugal because they are queer and Russia is crazy anti-LGBTQ, which I don't think I realized to the point where they could go to jail if they showed actual like queer um, sexual stuff in this deck. So the person who designed it, she's super cool. It's like a punk. I hope her pronouns are she, I'm not sure. So forgive me for assuming, but their pronouns, um, might be they, um, so I'm just going to go with that for now. So they're a, uh, tattoo artist and like punk artist, like super cool. Like we're following each other now. Shout out to you, Marie. And, um, but they're queer. And, um, yeah, I did not know. I did not know that. I don't know why I didn't realize that. I guess I thought Russia was maybe a little bit more socially progressive in that way. Um, but apparently, like some of the cards that I showed you guys, um, Christina had to have uh, changed because like, I think I showed you the three of cups with the two chicks and the one guy. Um, I guess the original had, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it now, but had the two women kissing and Christina had to have that edited because she could go to jail. Like we're not talking, she would get a fine or something. She would go to jail. It is illegal, illegal, like criminally illegal. I think this one had to be changed as well. The two women, they're now putting like lipstick on each other. Yeah. One is putting lipstick on the other, but I think originally they were kissing that had to be changed. Um, so now I'm even more excited about having this deck because they are literally risking their safety, Christina and her shop, um, to carry it. And it's been flying off the shelves in their shop. Look at that beautiful red gilding. So gorgeous. A little long for my hands. That was my only feedback I gave her. I was like, for the little handed people, it's kind of hard to shuffle. But look how I started shuffling it. I don't know about you guys, but it makes me think this, which seems so appropriate for the subject matter, does it not? I basically have to jerk this deck off to shuffle it. <laughs> Very sexual. <laughs> So I told her that she thought that was funny. I was like, but if you wanted to make them a little smaller, like I wouldn't be mad, but this is the first edition and there are further edits that Christina is going to have made because of, you know, fears about getting in trouble. So there's only 300 of these that have been made. I have one and she sent me a second and we are going to do a giveaway at HQ for the second deck. So one of y'all is going to win this limited edition deck that there's only been 300 made of with these original images with the sauciest 
possible images that they could put out. They're going to tone down some of the sauciness in the next editions. Okay. The other thing that they're going to change is um, Christina was like, so they watched the live, both the designer Marie and Christina watched the last live. And they were like, girl, you had us cracking up with like trying to figure out what the deck was all about. They were like, it has nothing to do with movies, but the, um, Marie girl just like likes movies or whatever. So she put movie characters in it. Christina was worried about licensing and like copyright issues. So she told Marie to take out all of the movie characters. And then a few of them just accidentally got left in. Like she just didn't check carefully as, uh, enough on the second go round to make sure they were all gone. So the random Anthony Hopkins and like the random Mandalorian are also not supposed to be in there. So those are also going to get changed. Um, so yeah, so that's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> so random, right? But so that's really cool. Yes, 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 yes. So the, the giveaway will officially be done through HQ. Um, so you're going to want to be on the HQ mailing list, bronxwitch.com, join the mailing list there. Um, the giveaway is going to happen in April. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of reels together. She and I, we're doing some collabo reels to announce it. And then um, we'll let people sign up on the newsletter all month long. And then I'll enter everybody's names into one of those like little picker things. And we'll pick a random winner. And then somebody is going to get one of this 300 deck run. So cool, right? really beautiful they're so pretty and when i tell you the way this deck has been hitting for my shadow work if you want to do shadow work other than the goetia deck that i showed you guys the tarot and darkness demon deck i would say this is a great one because the tarot and darkness goetia deck is you know it's definitely darker so if like demonic Im imagery is like a little not your style um or if you just don't like the fact that the cards are like basically black like it, they're they're not very like visually um interesting necessarily um so if you just don't like that vibe um then you would love this because this is a lot more of a typical tarot deck you know seven of wands you know so it's much more of a typical tarot deck but it's just very seductive very sultry vibes of sexuality and um you know just sort of avant-garde this one cracks me up oh, crazy ass. i like her she's crazy it's the queen of pentacles okay queen of pentacles it's giving you know with your pentagram lollipop Okay. Um, so I love this. I love this for shadow work for sure. I would definitely say get it if you are an SW, if you make adult content, if you have an OF, um, you know, like just anything like that. If you're a dancer, if you're, I just see it being really great for all of my like all my Scorpio tarot readers, all of my sultry readers um, that have like a more dark aesthetic. I think you'll love, 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 love this deck. So stay tuned. Make sure to join the HQ mailing list and keep an eye out. Follow us on Instagram at Bronx Witch HQ. Okay. Um, and you can join the mailing list from the link in our bio. Let me put that here just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. And, um, yeah, stay tuned for that giveaway. One other witch is going to have it. And so you and I will be the only witches in the USA that have their hands on this because it's only being sold in Russia right now, I think. So that is pretty cool. So that's the update on that. Um, Black Herman going to the graveyard, the deck, uh, the update on that. Yes, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I'm excited to see who wins it. So some of you will recall that I went to the graveyard uh, recently to locate the unmarked grave of a very famous, very powerful conjure man and magician named Black Herman. I was requested to do this job by one of my two hoodoo teachers, brother Moses Shanase of Colorado, head of the Holy Mountain Spiritualist Temple. 
Um, he is one of the most knowledgeable people I know on hoodoo and conjure. I think he has a master's in African religions, like super scholarly person, owns a copper still. Who does that? Owns a copper still. Everything he makes, he makes according to like ancient grimoire and like ancient biblical text instructions. Like he's one of those purest witches, you know what I mean? Um, really amazing to watch him work and how much like um, authenticity he puts into everything, how much research he puts into everything. So he managed to do enough research to track down enough information for us to gather what cemetery Black Herman was buried in um, and uh, what lo like area and m like grave marker. The problem is he doesn't have a headstone. So it was going to be a needle in a haystack type situation. The cemetery is 400 acres. Okay. Um, I went to the cemetery with my little bit of information. And I, I may be, I may be told, I may be told a tale or two about being a relative. Okay. You got to do what you got to do. Um, and the people of the cemetery were kind enough to believe my story, my very terribly put together story. I had no evidence, um, but they went along with it and they gave me maps and instructions for how to find this grave. Um, I told the whole story of my experience in the graveyard um, on a live. <laughs> yeah, we're all related, right? Right. I'm sure, I'm sure somewhere he's a cousin. Somehow, somewhere, okay. Um, and the people at the cemetery were white. So, you know, I, that's probably what they were thinking. <laughs> like, whatever, a black person, I don't know. Y'all look alike. We don't know the difference. So they, they let me in. And um, uh, I, I told the story on a live with Brother Moses, which I'll probably post on YouTube. I asked him to like download the video and send it to me which he's supposed to do so i'll post that up on youtube it'll be like the vertical way or whatever but you'll still be able to watch it um i won't rehash it all um tonight so we can get into our topic and in april our next high tea live is going to be about working with the spirits of the dead so i'll tell more of the story of like what the actual experience was and what it is like to um be communicating with the dead while doing this type of work what signs to look for how to know that you have their blessing how to ask permission what is proper spiritual protocol when going to someone's grave what should you take what should you not take what should you leave what should you not leave um how should you arrive how should you leave uh things of that nature we'll get all into that um in the next live but i did my thing i got the dirt um both from his grave and from the crossroads near the grave i sent that dirt off to colorado where brother moses um did what he needed to do with it and then sent it off to his partner in crime um dr cosmic nuage who was um the other hoodoo teacher of hoodoo academy and the other incredibly knowledgeable hoodoo man and conjurer that I know. So blessed and grateful to, to know these men and learn from them. So Cosmic is known for his incredibly well-made, incredibly powerful hoodoo powders. That's, that's kind of his area of expertise is making these really amazing powders. So he took the dirt combined it with black cat bone and uh, several other important conjure curios that Black Herman would have worked with and that are used for communicating with the spirit, not only of the dead, but of the dead magical practitioners, made an incredible powder out of it and then used that powder to actually conjure Black Herman to have a conversation with him. And he asked him several things. The first thing he asked him was, was your dirt properly obtained and paid for? And Black Herman said yes, which was like, <laughs> thank goodness. Okay, because that was my job. So I got the 
thumbs up. I did that right. All was good. I left the right offerings. I did what I was supposed to do. Thank you, Brother Moses, for sending me the right offerings. I did what I was supposed to do. All was good. I did not offend. I treaded the way I was supposed to. And that was just a beautiful, like, pat on the back kind of a moment. When a dead person tells you you did something right, it's like, thanks. Um, so that was the first question. The next question he asked was, do you want a headstone? Um, because people got really excited when I talked about maybe we should come together as a community to give him a proper headstone. So does he want that? Yes, he does want a headstone. But he was very clear that he does not want the location to be publicly known. He wants people to go on the same journey to search him out that I went on. He wants them to get the same amount of information that I had and then take that and go find him. And this is very typical of conjure men. It is very typical of hoodoo practitioners, men and women, to request to be buried in unmarked graves or to be buried in obscure locations because they know that people are going to be coming for their dirt and petitioning them on the other side and they want to rest. If you spent your whole life working spells for people, you probably want a break and don't want to be bothered to work spells for people in the afterlife. So conjure men and women oftentimes have unmarked graves on purpose so that they cannot be bothered. Um, so this is very typical of him, but he does want a headstone now, but he doesn't want it to be publicly known. If you're going to petition him to work miracles in your life, he wants you to be legitimate about your search. This is not some, I don't think he wants to turn into kind of like a Marie Laveau situation where 60 million people show up and are, you know, asking for, can you help me find my left shoe, you know, nonsense. Like he's not trying to be bothered for that kind of stuff. But he doesn't want people to have to work as hard as I did to find him. He does want, if you're willing to go on that journey to look for him, when you find him, he wants it to be obvious that you're in the right place. It wasn't obvious for me that I was in the right place. I had to have a conversation with a bird <laughs> to be sure, <laughs> basically. And thankfully, like I said, I know what signs to look for when I'm in the graveyard, that I'm in the right place and I'm doing the right thing. And the bird showed up, knock, 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 told me what I needed to know, blah, 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 blah. I had a conversation with a bird. I knew I was in the right place. But that might not be something that would be so easy for you. So now you're going to have a headstone. So when you get there, you know you're in the right place. So he does want a headstone, but he doesn't want to publicly advertise where it is. The next thing that he was very clear about was he does not want donations for this headstone. He is a proud man. He was a very wealthy man. He was incredibly successful as a magician. He lived up in here in Harlem during the Renaissance. He was friends with all the, you know, all the baddies, all of the movers and shakers of Black Harlem of the Renaissance. He was at the, he was, you know, the David Copperfield, the David Blaine of his day. You know, he would have been like at the party with Jay-Z doing card tricks in the corner. So he was not a poor man. He was not a beggar. He was not somebody who, um, he died with money. He died on tour. Um, and his manager actually charged people a dime to come see his dead body. So he was making money after he died. So he was, he, uh, does not want charity. What he does want though, is to work. He passed away, I think he was buried in 1934. So it's been almost 100 years of him being buried in this unmarked grave and nobody bothering him for work. Nobody coming to petition him for anything. So he's had his rest and he's ready to work. And by work, he means he's ready for people to call on him and ask him to do things in the supernatural and he's ready to show up and do it. So what Doc Cosmic did after making the powder was to send that back to Brother Moses. And Brother Moses has used that powder to consecrate prayer cards and candles that have been made in Black Herman's image. And I am going to have a case of black and a case of white 
Black Herman candles and prayer cards coming to the shop in April. Twenty five percent of the sale of all of these cards and candles are going to go to the headstone. So Brother Moses is already selling some. Doc Cosmic will be selling some and I will be selling some. And together we are going to take twenty five percent of what we uh, make from the candles for the gravestone, which Hoodoo Moses has already um, uh, picked out. And it's black granite. And it's badass, which makes perfect sense for Black Herman to have a badass black granite headstone. It's going to look nice. It's going to stand out from the other headstones, too. How exciting is that? Right? Yo, when I tell, listen, I love y'all. That first candle is my baby. That first candle is my baby. I will put them on sale after I do what I got to do with Black Herman first. I love you, but I did the work to get the dirt. So me and him are going to have a conversation first, and we're going to see what it's all about. He said he wants to work. I have some ideas and some requests. So we're going to get that done, and then I'm going to put them up for sale in the shop. But I am going to do a pre-order, <laughs> okay? I will do a pre-order so y'all can claim yours um, before, the, before they sell out in the shop because I'm just getting one case of um, – each color. I was like, I want a black and a white. Brother Moses was like, what do you, you know, like, what do you want? I was like, can I do a case of black and a case of white? Um, and I didn't think that white was going to be possible um, because I thought that the design for the outside of the candle is white, but it's not. It's white and black. So it's going to look good on black and white candles. And Brother Moses is just so, he's just so like meticulous. He took the image of Black Herman from the cover of his book and a picture of Black Herman in his conjure robes and had somebody design them together. So he's in the pose that he is on the cover of his book, but instead of that outfit, he's wearing his conjure outfit. It's a dope ass picture, boss ass picture. So cool. We should put that picture on the headstone. Um, I'm also going to get for the shop copies of his book because Black Herman has a grimoire, y'all. He wrote his own book with rituals, recipes, spells, and his instructions on magic, illusion, and conjure. And the book is still in print. So I am going to get some copies of the book because I really do encourage you, if you get the candle, to either get the candle and the prayer card or probably even better, get the candle and the book so that you will have his own instructions for working magic. So if there's something that he's got in there that you want, you should, I mean, I think it would be a good idea to use his spell or use his recipe for what it is you want. Okay. I got that good, good. I got that good. And listen, so we were talking and Brother Moses was like, are we creating a folk saint right now? And I was like, yo, we are creating a whole folk saint. We are literally elevating somebody to folk sainthood. Thank you, my love. You need it. Honey, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, spirit is so wild the way that, that, that it works. Like this could not be showing up in my life at a more perfect time. It is incredible. And I'm just like, I'm honored that they would include me. You know what it is to have your teachers call on you and be like, yo, you want to be a part of this? Like the way I'm honored, hey, Jeanette, is unbelievable unbelievable like i'm so honored of all the people i'm just like wow wow you know yes i might be one of the few witches that they know in the bronx but i am certainly not the only witch that could have gotten to that cemetery they could have called on other witches that they know and they called me and i'm just so honored and really excited about this because when people think about hoodoo and conjure, they do not think about New York City. 
And if you are a person of color in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, like if you're in the Northeast, you probably feel really disconnected from your hoodoo roots because you feel like you got to go down south to have a legitimate connection to hoodoo. And it's so amazing for me to be able to show people and show witches that know hoodoo and conjure was happening here in New York. Mass migrations of Black people from the South happened from the 1900s all the way through the like 60s and 70s. And they brought with them hoodoo and conjure magic. And they didn't stop practicing. It just looked a little bit different. You know what I mean? They weren't in the fields anymore. Now they were in the factories, but they were still doing that magic. They were still working it. And um, for him to do it on the level that he was doing it and re reach the level of success that he was at and do it in such a cosmopolitan, like New York kind of way, you know, to be famous touring around the country, doing magic shows and then working spells on the side for people like that's so New York. Um, and it is really cool to bring to the Bronx the history and the legend of this hoodoo man so that people who live in the Northeast know you do not have to go to New Orleans, to Louisiana, to Alabama to connect with your hoodoo roots. Our hoodoo ancestors were up here and they were hoodoo in. Okay? They were hoodoo in just as much as anybody else. And we have this amazing example of that in Black Herman. And the same way the people of New Orleans have Marie Laveau, we have Black Herman. And I really think it's going to get to that level where like Brother Moses said this. He was like, 20 years from now, we're going to see like, or not even 20 years from now. He was like, I, I feel like we're going to see like a Netflix documentary about Black Herman as a result of our work to bring his name back into popularity and back into notoriety and being well known again. And um, yeah, he's like very quickly rising to the level of like patron saint of HQ in a lot of ways um, or one of, one of, because I certainly cannot um, dismiss or disrespect um, La Dominadora because she is the very first saint to ever show up um, for us, but she's an actual saint. This is more of a, a folk saint type of situation. And um, yeah, it's amazing. It's like a trifecta. Prince High John, Black Herman and Martha are like kind of coming together in this very powerful um, collaboration that has me at the center, which is like so freaking humbling. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. I felt that way when I was sitting at his grave. I felt like he was like, oh, okay, you came correct. You came correct. You came with the right level of reverence. You know what I'm saying? You came with care. You came with the right offerings. You, you came correct. You got the stamp of approval before you, you know, even came here. Right? Our own folk saint. A New York City folk saint. Like... That's dope. That is so dope. And like, to me, it's like, it is hoodoo in the city. Yes. And it's like, it's so New York, yo. You know what I mean? Because like you have the hoodoos of the South that are like on their rocking chairs with their head wraps and stuff. And he's like, he's, he looked like Usher at the Super Bowl. Okay. He's, he, his outfits bling bling big old blingy crosses okay and nice robes good quality suki shirts and stuff like he was giving he was no country bumpkin he might have come from kentucky but he definitely left that shit behind and was very much um a cosmopolitan kind of city man hanging with the langston hugheses and you know all the cool rich black people in harlem you know what I mean? Like, 
I think he was married, but I don't think that means a damn thing because I just know, I just know the baddies were all over him. He was good looking, thick mustache, hairline was all the way to here. I know. Okay. I know his little black book was booked, busy. Okay. He was he was definitely giving that that New York cosmopolitan swag. Um and in typical New York fashion, he learned how to take what he learned, you know, on the farm in the country in Kentucky and turned it into a money-making enterprise and become famous off of it. Um, that is so cool. That is really, really cool. So... I cannot wait to get my hands on these candles. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a pre-order. So even before I am done with what I need to do, I will make it available so that you guys can lock in what you want. 25% of all of the sales are going to the headstone. Um, I would love to see us raise the, the money for the headstone by the fall. I think that would be kind of cool to time it up maybe near the staycation, near Samhain, Halloween, honoring the ancestors. Feels like the right time of year um, to do it before the winter comes. So I would love to get there um, by the fall. Brother Moses says when we reach a thousand dollars in um, funds towards the headstone, we'll call the cemetery and start seeing what the process is for making the arrangements. But he found the headstone, it's black granite, and it's going to run about $1,400. I want to say fifteen because I feel like there'll be taxes and like other stuff. So let's say $1,500 for the headstone. And when we get to $1,000, we are going to call the cemetery and start making um, arrangements with them to find out what's the process, how long is it going to take, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, can we have a ceremony to put it in? I'm sure Brother Moses and Cosmic will want to come to New York for the actual unveiling. Um, so that would be so awesome. So yeah, so let's make it happen, y'all. And I think the really cool thing is this is not donations. This is not charity. Black Herman was very clear. Two people donated, by the way. Um, already to the headstones, I owe you a candle. Okay, so I know, I know your names. I know Keisha donated, and I forgot who the other person was. It was somebody on YouTube, but I can look through my thing. Um, I will be reaching out to the two of you um, to make arrangements for you to get your candle. Because Black Herman was very clear. He is not taking donations. He wants to do the work. You need to petition him for miracles in his in your life. He will show up for you and put in the work and work for that money towards the headstone. Um, if you decline, because obviously I can't force the candle on you, but if you decline, I'm going to take your donations and we are going to give it to the cemetery for like the donation to the cemetery for like general upkeep or whatever. Okay. Um, but it cannot go to the headstone. He was very clear about that. He will not take donations. So y'all have to buy candles. You have to buy cards. You have to buy his book. 25% of any of those things are going to go to the headstone. And I think what I'll do is I'll make a bundle. So the candle, the card, and the book will all be available separate, but I'll also do a bundle. So if you want to get all three, it'll be like a you know lesser price or whatever. But 25% of the bundle will go to anything with Black Herman's name on it. 25% is going to the headstone. Okay. All right. How is it to have to keep our practices closed? We out here. We out here. Yeah. Oh, hey, Nuri. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, you guys are all a part of it. Like, think like think about this. Like, 
how cool this is. Like 20 years from now, when new witches are talking about Black Herman, the same way they talk about Marie Laveau, where it's like, do you know where his grave is? Oh, go, let's, let's go find it. Like, oh, there's a shop in the Bronx that like, you know, that started it. Like we got to go there. Like imagine knowing that you are a part of that that like you bought one of the first candles that made the headstone happen. Like you're the reason why new witches in the Northeast that are interested in hoodoo, that are interested in conjure, have this folk saint that's become like the, you know, the representation of conjure in the city. Isn't that cool? I don't know, stuff like that, like, geeks me out. Like, I think that is so cool um, to be a part of hoodoo history, you know? Like, wow. I think that's so awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so cool. Um, and um, speaking of Nuri being in the room, shout out to the book club. Um, Tonight's meeting was awesome. Um, I was able to pop in for a little bit of it. Uh, it. It starts at seven, which is like when I'm closing the shop. So unfortunately I'm gonna be like always late, but um, I was able to pop in for a little bit and um, let everybody know that, you know, as soon as I found out that he had a book, cause okay, there is a book that I learned about when I was doing my research on him called Mumbo Jumbo, but it's not his book. This is a book written where he's the main character. So somebody wrote a fiction book where he's the main character. It's kind of like an Afrofuturist fiction book and he's the main character. Uh, but what I did not know is that he wrote a book with his spells and rituals on hoodoo and conjure and magic. And when I found that out, I was like, oh, um, I know we've talked about the elements now once. That's next, that's next, it's next, okay. And this is the element of spirit technically. Um, but when I found out that he had a book, I was like, okay, we got to have that in the shop. But I also think that we should read it in the book club. So um, spoiler alert, for the second half of the year's books, his book is probably going to be one of them. I really feel like we should read it together and, um, you know, get into it and see what magic they was working back then, you know? So I think that's cool. The night is young. Yeah, we're doing, we're actually doing good. You know, I'd be up here running my mouth for like two hours. So um, this is actually perfect timing, but I really wanted to, um, yes, which is don't sleep. Listen, the next high tea, just so you guys know, is at midnight. Okay, heads up. Um, for a couple of reasons. One is because it is after Witches of Color, I think. No, wait, does that make sense? Yes, it's after Witches of Color because that's when the full moon is. So it's after Witches of Color, which is at 10, all right? So that's one reason. But the other reason is we are going to be talking all about the dead. So being at the liminal hour felt really right. So it's going to be late. You might have to watch the replay. And I totally understand, okay? No, no, um, no judgment from me. Um, but in case it's confusing what time it's happening, it's on Sunday night, but technically that's Monday morning cause it's midnight. So for me, that's Sunday for me, it's night until I go to bed. All right. So that's Sunday night, but it's going to be after witches of color. Yeah, I'm excited. I think this is going to be a good, good one for us to read. Um, but heads up about that. So we're going to be meeting at midnight next month on the, technically it's the 22nd. You could say 11.59 on the 21st um, to talk about the element of spirit specifically. Um, what does that mean? Um, I've had new witches ask me, what is the difference between spirits and spirit? And we're going to talk about the difference between the two. And we're going to be talking about spirits next time. All right the spirits of beings that formerly had bodies on this earth that were formerly contained in mass and matter on this earth and now no longer have bodies but are still accessible for one reason or another 
and we're going to focus specifically on the dead, dead people, dead pets, um, and how we communicate with them. What happens after somebody dies from a witch perspective? Why are those spirits accessible to us when and for how long? And why would a witch be interested in that in the first place? Why do we consider the spirits of the deceased to be of any use to us? Which one should we work with? Which one should we not? And how do we work with them? Um, after getting the stamp of approval from Black Herman himself, that um, this is actually my first time going to the graveyard to do work with somebody that I was not related to. I've gone to the graveyard many, many times, but always for my own relatives. Um, and so I've always assumed that they're going to be happy with what I'm doing because they're mostly just happy that I'm there. You know what I mean? The rest of the family just buries them and forgets that they're there, right? So they're just happy that I'm there. Um, to have somebody that I am not related to say, good job. You did that right. You did, you, you handled that right. That was wonderful for me because that just tells me, okay, I really know how to deal with spirits of the dead, period. Not just my own ancestors, but period. And I can teach other witches how to do what I did so that if they want to petition the spirit of somebody that they're not related to, if they want to go to the graveyard to do whatever you're trying to do there, um, I can give you some guidance on how to do it properly and make sure that you don't come back home on no shit. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about. Yay. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Yes, be there, be there.